Hello, my name is Susan Toll and I'm a volunteer with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I'm here today to talk about suicide because of the staggering number of lives we have lost across the globe. Every year we lose about a million people to suicide. Suicide affects us all. We all know someone we've lost to suicide. We know someone who has lost someone to suicide. So today our goal is to help you understand what is going on and what the resources are that are available to you to help you get through this tragic situation. One of the most important things that I want everyone to understand is that suicide is a health issue. Mental health is health. The other thing I want everyone to understand is that suicide is preventable. If we get the right treatment, the right medications, the right course of therapy, we can prevent many, many loss, losses of life. Hi, my name is Eddie Carriker. I'm a chaplain here at Cabin Cook Funeral Home in Mooresville. And when I think about men, or men and or women who have taken their lives, to, it hurts my heart. It hurts me not just for the person whose life was taken, but for those that are left here. The le those that are left to put the pieces back together. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but for years. And I want people to know the love of God that is there for each and every person. And as a minister and as a community, we have to wrap our arms around people and love them. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Wallace, Senior Pastor of Living Water Ministry of Trotman. And I want to talk to you today about a subject that's sensitive to my heart. It's near and dear to me because I've uh, in, experienced it myself. The subject is suicide prevention. I can give you statistics about the number of attempts of suicide. I can give you statistics about the actual suicides, but truth be told, one suicide is too many. The Mooresville Suicide Prevention Working Group, in whom I'm proud to be a part of, is here for you. And I want to encourage you to let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Jerry Kloniger. I'm the senior pastor at First Baptist Church in Mooresville. And um, I'm happy to speak to you today about um, suicide prevention. It's a very personal issue for me. Uh, I've been blessed to, to work with a lot of folks in our community and one of my favorite fields to work uh, literally and figuratively is with uh, the athletics at Morrisville uh, High School. Uh, I get to serve as chaplain, sometimes coach and sometimes bottle washer um, with some of the teams, especially the football team. So for those of you who may be a, um, a fan or a participant or a parent of one, uh, you may know me as Pastor Jerry, but this is a, a, a very vibrant, uh, difficult, sad topic, and one that's sometimes riddled with stigma and guilt, uh, both which I feel personally, having done far too many funerals for folks who have taken their lives. And what we say is, um, we'd give anything, I'd give anything, if some of the people that I've been close to had just called me. Um, one of the things I, I get to do, and it's a, it's a privilege, it's a blessing, is get to know the, the players, their families, the coaches. And each year I give out my card uh, and just tell them if you're ever in need, if you're ever in, having one of those dark nights of the soul, uh, just call me. Please call me. And I've been blessed that some of the young men and uh, young ladies have done that. Um, it's just a good thing to talk. You know, when you talk about the scope of the problem, there are over a million suicides across our globe every year. For every suicide, there are 25 attempts. That's 25 million attempts across the globe every year. When you're talking about children, it runs up to as many as 100 to 200 attempts per suicide. Hi, I'm Ron Camper Johnny. I'm the police chief in Mooresville, North Carolina. So I've been in policing for 38 years, and um, in all those years, I've seen, I have seen a lot of devastation in both families and personal uh, tragedies on, when we're talking about suicide. And at the end of the day, what happens, even if it's that moment, that person is suffering some type of mental health crisis. Uh, and what I would like to say is you need to reach out, you need to get help, um, whoever that is, doctors, 
your family, your friends, and for and friends and family that when you know somebody is having a mental health issue or you think they do, you need to reach out to. I see so many times that uh, people will not do that. You know, if your son or daughter or somebody you cared about had some type of brain tumor, you would search out the internet on finding cures, even if it was something that was uh, that could help them a little bit. You, you'd fly this person all across the country and across the world to get them some help. But for some reason, when there's a mental health issue, people want to close their blinds and not discuss it. They're afraid of what their neighbors will say. They're afraid of what their friends will say. So they try to handle these things on their own. My message for you would be don't do that. Don't do that. Don't suffer in silence. Get the person the help that they need. So I'm Officer Watts with the Mooresville Police Department, and I've been with the Mooresville Police Department going on five years now. I currently am on the crisis negotiation team here with the Mooresville Police Department, as well as I have been a part of the Mecklenburg County Mobile Crisis Team for the last 10 years. And with that team, we respond to a variety of calls related to mental health crisis, substance abuse crises, and just situation crisis calls. A lot of the calls that we do receive with Mecklenburg County Mobile Crisis is suicide calls in regards to people that have suicide ideations. We also have responded to a lot of calls where they have been completed suicides and we're there to help the family kind of cope and process through what they have experienced. In regards to my background, I have um, I'm, I have a license as a licensed clinical social worker, as well as certification as a qualified mental health professional. And I also have my doctorate degree in community care and counseling. So I'm really excited to be a part of this team and this effort within Mooresville on the suicide prevention team, because I think it is a valuable um, asset for the community and to have that awareness. Part of what I feel like people should know in regards to just suicide is that there's no one face for suicide. I think a lot of times we look at the statistics and the numbers and they, they put people in this population of who to expect um, or have a greater risk of suicide. But when you really look at the people that actually commit suicide, when you make it, when you personalize it and you look at the families, there's no face. There's no one particular population that commits suicide. I think that everyone has the mindset and everyone is at risk for suicide. Um, when you look at from a child to an adult or anything like that, we have to be aware of people's actions. We have to be aware of people's comments, people's behaviors, because you never know. It could be your coworker, you just saw them the day before and then you get the call that they committed suicide. And you think about that and you realize that I just saw them yesterday and I didn't notice anything. Or it can be you're, you get a call from your school and your the school is telling you that your child may, made a suicidal comment. We have to take those comments seriously because you never know that particular day that that child or your friend or your mother or whomever is gonna actually make that final decision to take their life. In general terms, there are 14 to 22 warning signs, depending on how you categorize them. Um, basically, it's what do people say, what do people do, and how do they act? So in terms of what they say, you think about hearing people say they're trapped, or they have unbearable pain, or they're talking about killing themselves, um, or what do they do, they talk about people they want to have certain things like um, they want so and so to have their jewelry they want so and so to have their mink coat um, they want so and so to have a portrait um, they give away things they uh, I I any number of things about what they do and then how they act are they acting um, anxious are they feeling a lot of humiliation are they quick to erupt quick to um, act in anger are they volatile? So there are all these different things that people say, do, and act that we need to watch out for. And we need to help each other understand what those are. If you see the warning signs of suicide in regards to someone's actions, their behaviors, their comments, their talks about suicide, their suicide ideation, 
we, we have to take those comments and those behaviors serious because you never know when a person is gonna actually act on those comments or those behaviors. If you do notice those signs, there are an abundance of resources that are available to help you. The new suicide hotline is 988. You can also reach out to Partners Behavioral Health for Iredale County, and they can get you directly connected to Iredale County Mobile Crisis who will respond to assist. If there is a life-threatening or immediate danger, you can reach out to 911 and someone will come out to help you as well. In addition to the warning signs, we need to be aware of certain risk factors. There are things in, that we need to understand, like a family history of suicide, or is there mental health? Are there mental health conditions that have been uh, present in the family before? We need to understand: is there access to lethal means? Is there substance abuse in the family? Has there been child abuse in the family? So all of that, coupled with the warning signs, can work together in a negative way and create what we call the perfect storm. That that can be a very dangerous situation. So the more we can educate around those, the better off we will be because we know what to watch for. Hi, I'm Lindsay Farah, the Mental Health Coordinator for Mooresville Graded School District. Unfortunately, we have lost students in the past to suicide and we have had students who have lost loved ones to suicide and we are here to support and get our students through this. We have uh, counselors, psychologists on staff at every building. We have a um, school-based mental health program. We also have a partnership with Rainbow Kids so that we can offer, whether it be grief support or emotional support um, to our students, please, we encourage you to please reach out. We're here to help uh, if you're ever feeling lost or alone or like you have nowhere to go, please know your counselors and school staff members are here to help. So if you aren't comfortable reaching out to a counselor, reach out to a teacher and they can get you to connect with your counselor or someone who can help you because we are all here to support you. So please reach out. One of the biggest obstacles we have in our fight against suicide is overcoming the stigma. If we can overcome the stigma, then we can raise the awareness and by raising the awareness, people feel free to talk about suicide and the, the feelings that they are having. So if we can do that and we can talk freely, then we can reduce the rate of suicide. Suicide has touched us all. It's touched our friends, it's touched our families, and it's touched our coworkers. Please don't be afraid to reach out. Join our efforts to save lives and bring hope to those affected by suicide. Thank you. We all know there are many factors that compound together for suicidal thoughts to occur. If you are in need of any other resources or assistance, we encourage you to visit nc211.org for a database of human service resources. As you've heard repeatedly today, suicide prevention is a priority to be taken seriously throughout our community. Let us help by connecting you with resources you need. If this is not an immediate need, I encourage you to visit mooresvilleresources.org for a listing of all the local suicide prevention services and a list of training opportunities.